Hello lovely people, how are you all today? I hope some of you are a bit cooler than me here in sticky stuffy London. I don't know what's going on with this weather. It's only about 27 degrees but the humidity is about 70% and honestly up here in my cottage in the sky I'm wilting. And it's funny because I was actually kind of thinking of you guys who are on the bottom side of the planet who must be getting so excited for spring at the moment and kind of imagining you all with your um, seed packets and seed catalogues dreaming up new dreams for your gardens, allotments, plots, whatever this year. So happy dreaming. And for us up here on the top of the planet, well, I hope most of you are getting weather you can deal with. I know um, Clarice in France, I watched some of her YouTube stuff. She's been having horrible storms. Um, Dave, Blue Star Dave, some of you may know his videos. He's been having a lot of soggy weather up in the northeast. So we seem to be getting it okay here. We're getting a lot of warmth, not much rain, so I haven't watered, but it's all good. Anyway, <clears throat> I'm going to have a quick catch up with you guys today because. <sighs> I've had the most crazy manic day today because this whole week that's coming up now is going to be a bit crazy doolally for me. Um, so you, you might have heard me occasionally speaking about this elderly relative I have, my dear, dear great aunt that we call Auntie Teapot. <laughs> yes, we call her Teapot. In her younger, more able days, it's because she always had always had a brew on. So my gorgeous aunt Teapot is coming out of hospital this week. Um, she's fine. She had a bit of a fall. Uh, she was okay, but she'd lost a bit of mobility. So they wanted to keep her in and kind of check her out. Anyway, it's been weeks now. And unfortunately her mobility has deteriorated whilst being in hospital. I think just being at home is better for her because she scoots around the, the, the her little cottage doing things but what it means is i'm going to have to go so normally i would go to her once a week for a day or once a fortnight for say two or three days and when i go i do a load of cooking to fill her freezer up because she likes my soups bless her and she finds them easy to eat um but since losing a bit of mobility in hospital, she can't get on and off the levy, for instance. Sorry, too much information. So this week, I think either from Wednesday or Thursday, depends when they discharge, I'm going to have to go down and move in with her for a few days to just do some 24-hour round-the-clock cares with her. So one of my jobs at the beginning of this week, which is what I'm getting to about being busy, um, I'm going to have to try and find some full-time carers, both day carers and night carers, to, to go in there. So I don't know how much time I'm going to have either in the garden or in the kitchen, whether it's cooking or storing, preserving. Everything's a little bit up in the air at the moment. But um, we love her and we've got to sort her out. So... I've tried frantically to do stuff for me today to get me out of the way and then from Monday I'm kind of, I, I think I might have Tuesday free for the garden, I've got a couple of plans, I might try and start the deck, I'm definitely going to start putting the winter crops in but then for a few days don't know where I'm going to be at, probably with her, don't know about videoing etc etc. So, the reason I started to make this video this evening is because I was thinking about meals for the week for me. Obviously I'm thinking about meals for her but that's kind of a different ball game. Thinking about meals for me for the week and then thinking, <clears throat> okay, what have I got? But more importantly, when have I got time to cook? So if I've got time to cook, can I do a little marathon, like two or three hour session to cook for the whole week? That sort of thing. And it made me think, excuse me, <coughs> it got me thinking about um, you guys, I, I get a lot of messages either from YouTube or on my Facebook page, sometimes privately, asking, what do I eat? 
how do I meal plan? All of those sorts of questions. So I thought it'd be kind of handy if I just do it as a little chat in a video. Um, <laughs> I was planning to do this about six hours ago. Um, I had a quickie visit to the garden this morning. Some of you may have seen the last video, the blight fight video, where I harvested some beans and spuds. I've done a few more of those this morning, plus other things which I'll show you in a minute. So, so I was planning on filming this as soon as I got home, about 12 o'clock. My problem in life, it's a really hard problem. I'm a complete sports nut. I'm an absolute sportaholic. I love all sports. I have my sport channel on the radio tuned in all the time. If I'm walking down the street and out the corner of my eye in a bar, I see a, a match that I'm interested in playing on a TV, I'll end up in a bar watching, not necessarily drinking, just watching sport. My absolute ultimate sport is tennis. Oh, I love it. I eat, breathe, sleep tennis. I actually, I, I don't think there's a day go by that goes by when I don't think about tennis. I just love it. I'm kind of gutted that I haven't been able to play for about 10 years because the wrists, the knees, and but in my heart I still play it and in my heart when Venus walked on centre court yesterday I was thinking, hmm 37, maybe this is still a chance for me. <laughs> oh why not, why not, oh you know, oh could I have been a sports star, I doubt it, I doubt it very much, jack of all trades, master of none. My dream job would have been sports commentator or sports photographer. Can you imagine it? Spending your whole professional life watching sport. So not many people know that about me. If I'm not in the garden, if I'm not in the kitchen, if I'm not sound asleep, I'm probably watching or listening to or reading about sport somehow or other. Anyway, enough digressions. So, the, the main question people want to know is, at the moment especially, is can I survive from my plot? Do I supplement my diet from outside of the plot? Simple answer is, yes, I do. Um, <clears throat> from my notes from last year, it, I reckoned I was about 70% of everything I was eating was coming from the plot, which was fantastic. My plan this year is to get that up to 80%, maybe even higher. I'll never be completely self-sufficient. I simply do not have the space to be self-sufficient. Um, I don't think I have the climate to be self-sufficient in some of the things I want, but the vast, vast majority of my diet comes straight from the garden. So someone was asking about what I eat that's not from the garden. So I think it's Actually, they're also asking me about my vegetarianism. Are you vegan? Are you vegetarian? What's your status? So, um, I'm vegetarian. I've been veggie, strict veggie, as in no fish. Oh, it's not vegetarian. Um, since I was a kid. Don't remember what meat tastes like. Don't remember the texture. That's fine by me. Uh, did it for ethical reasons when I was quite small. Not going to go into politics. Have no fear. Everyone does what they want. But for me, I made that choice when I was quite young and I stand by it and I live by it and it kind of that also ripples into my ecological ethics as well if you like just in terms of the whole planet no I'm not vegan I don't drink milk um, I don't eat eggs rarely rarely use butter don't touch cream but I do love my cheese I am shrinking my cheese consumption quite considerably and what I've tried to do in recent years is I'm tending to eat goat's cheese and I've got a couple of suppliers who are quite local who have really really small herds, goat herds, very small herds, really well managed, the goats are on pasture most of the time so again from that ethical point of view I still feel I still feel a bit dodgy about it and maybe one day I'll give up cheese as well but for now 
I do still have some cheese, maybe like once a week now instead of three or four times a week, and I do it as ethically well as I can, if that makes sense. So that's the vegetarian vegan thing aside. So apart from the veggies, what on earth do I eat or what do I buy to supplement? Very basic, it's mostly the dried stuff. So I buy rice, lentils, um, oats, olive oil. If you saw the France video, you'll know I like my olive oil. Lemons, that's another one. Oh, if I could just grow a lemon tree, because I know that a lot of my lemons are imported and I think about food miles. Mm, it doesn't sit well with me. Um, so I have, have or am trying to cut down on those a bit too. But generally that's it in terms of buying outside of the veggies. I don't eat a lot of fruit. Um, I don't really have, I don't have space on the allotment to grow any. Um, if I had a second plot I'd do all fruit. I do get lots of berries from the hedges and I also get quite a few berries when I'm watering other people's gardens when they're on holiday and they say, you know, please harvest the berries because otherwise they'll go to the mush. Um, so I harvest them and whack them in the freezer for my smoothies. Gorgeous burst of summit in the middle of winter when you have a smoothie. But otherwise, yeah, I could make some space on the allotment, but for me, um, fruit has always been more of a sort of a dessert or a, or a treat. It, I, I'm quite happy to live without fruit. Um, if I get it, brilliant. If I don't get it, it's not a problem. <clears throat> So, the other thing um, folk have been asking about is meal planning. Do I plan my meals for the week? <laughs> you guys know me. Of course I plan. I plan everything. <laughs> I do plan, not <laughs> partly because I'm a planning nerd, but also it's just a practical thing. So when I was working full time, if I was, say, working a Monday day shift, Tuesday night shift, which is basically Tuesday and Wednesday out, Thursday off, Friday night shift, which is Friday and Saturday out, you kind of, I do plan in terms of have I, where have I got two or three hours where I can do a massive little cookathon, massive little, that doesn't make sense, a massive cookathon, whack a load of stuff in the freezer, whack stuff in the fridge, a load of ready meals, so I do plan. And even now I'm not working, that habit has stayed with me. And actually, even though I'm not working for someone else, I'm working a lot at the moment, so um, so yes, I do need to still plan. Which is how this came up this evening. Um, what I tend to do is, I basically look at what I've got. I have a few, well, I have quite a few favorite recipes. Now, some of them I know full well that I can't do at the moment because I don't have the right ingredients. And I don't want to go to a shop and buy something, especially buying it out of season, because it will have been transported from goodness knows where. But I just don't want to go to the shops to buy. And the beautiful thing about eating seasonally is, I was thinking about the pumpkins, which I was looking at this morning briefly. I'm going to have to wait till mid-October for my first bowl of squash soup. Now I have my last bowl at the end of April. At the end of April, I was sick of eating squash soup. I was so bored with it. By October, I will be so champing at the bit for another bowl. So, it's seasonal. Obviously, I store a lot of produce. So, I'm having tomatoes out of season, but they're bottled tomatoes. They're not whole, they're not fresh. Beans, I have all year round. Green in the summer, dried over the winter and then into the spring. Um, which is also slightly dictates how I eat in that during July, August and September when we're getting all the harvest start coming in dribs and drabs and then quite a lot I eat well I always eat very simply but in the summer it's even more simple I tend to have a lot of salads I eat a lot of things raw, uncooked, just literally chucking things in a bowl I mean what could be more beautiful a tomato, a cucumber a few salad leaves, a red onion, a pepper maybe if you're growing peppers, 
I'm so happy to have my purpose this year. It's really, really simple. No prep. Because this is the other thing about me. <laughs> I don't actually like cooking. Is that true? Mm, it, I like eating. I love eating my veggies, but I don't want to spend hours in the kitchen. I'm not into complicated recipes. I'm not into looking at a recipe book where there are so many ingredients, you have to have a degree in internet studies to be able to even find it. And then you have to take a flight to the Himala Himalayas to actually get an art. Ah, can't be doing with it. So any of you who've seen any of my cooking know it's really simple, usually maybe five or six ingredients and that's it. So for the next, Sort of two months or so having come off the back of living on stored produce I will start to have meals which aren't recipes as such but they're literally just plates chopped together of the veggies I've got coming um, which I'm going to show you in a sec and I love it it's I love that thing of you you go into your garden and you've got a cucumber um, a tomato, six beans and one onion that are ready. What can you make? I'll oh, just chuck them all in. So let me just, I'm going to just bend the camera down a little bit. So I'm just going to show you. So, oops, this new tripod is a bit wonky wonky. <clears throat> can you actually see that? Well, I'll pick them up and show you. So let's pretend for now, because I realised, let's pretend this is a bottle of tomatoes, because I've left them all outside and I can't be bothered to go and get any to show you, because it means going down half a flight of stairs and I'm hot and sticky and I don't want to. So I always have my tomatoes on hand. Brilliant. I've got loads of dry beans still. This is my boloshi. This is one of many, many jars still of chickpeas. Fabulous. So I've got, a, I've got tomatoes and beans, which are a great base for anything. So literally this morning, um, I've grabbed from the shed, I've grabbed a load more of the Anya um, potatoes. This is a new potato. It's really waxy and it's gorgeous in salad. Grabbed a few more peas. Yum! Um, some more of the Heldo, which is the flat green bean. They're kind of stringless. Oh look, I've just put mud all over it, that's fine. Some more of the Rockin' Core, which are the waxy yellow. I've grabbed a load of my celery. Oh my goodness, it's so strong. It's absolutely stonking gorgeous. I pulled out a few carrots. They're looking really nice this year without too much forking. And sorry, I'm still chomping on the celery. <clears throat> and another cucumber. So basically, um, I think about my week ahead. I think about it in terms of how much time have I got in the kitchen? Am I going to be out of the house all day? As in, for example, am I going to work? That would be a, that would be one of the things I would think about. So it's a packed lunch. Will I be in the garden? It's a packed lunch. Um, I haven't got all the, the spuds out. There's loads more in the fridge. Oh, and I forgot to say some whites and some reds, a couple of each. So I kind of look at all this and I say to myself, right, okay, with the spuds, I've got enough for three meals. So what can I put with them? Hang on, I'm going to have a slug of water. I'm about to choke on the celery. <coughs> Sorry about that, got a bit caught in my throat. Yeah, so I look at the spuds and I think, right, there's enough for three meals. What can I do with them? Now, one of the things I love at this time of year, very simple potato salad with peas and some broad beans. So if you remember, I froze a load of broad beans. So I'll do a portion of peas. I'll get a portion of broad beans out of the freezer. I'll probably chop up one of the red onions to give it a bit of kick. There we go, gorgeous. And that will actually probably be a salad that we'll do for two lunches. And then I can maybe look at the spuds and think, well, there's another salad. So I might do the potatoes and then use both the held and the rocking core, just steam them for five minutes. Boom, that's another salad. Probably enough for two days, two lunches. 
And then what I might do is, because they're gorgeous warm, is do the spots warm, smash them up a bit. They're really waxy, so they're gorgeous for smashing. They don't make good mash, but they, they're great for just smashing. And then with my bottled tomatoes, which are invisible, look at my gorgeous tomatoes. I'm so lazy, I can't get them out of the uh, hallway. But with a bottle of tomatoes, I could do a sort of almost ragu. So some tomatoes with one of the onions, some bits and bobs of beans, um, possibly even a carrot and make an oh actually what I could add, uh, oh this is a good idea so add into it so we'll have tomatoes some fresh beans I'll rehydrate some chickpeas and I'll make a sort of ragui stew and then that ragui stew can then just be chopped on top of some smashed spuds so you see this is what this is what I'm talking about it in terms of what have you got in front of you what can you make with it and even as I look at it now, I'm thinking, oh, I could add this, or I could take that out, or add this instead. Um, the carrots I've pulled out specially for my tomato and beans uh, soup, because I've got, I've got a fair bit of tomato left, actually. I have more than I thought. So I'm going to be having masses coming soon. So I thought, yeah, I'll make a tomato and bean soup, so I'll probably rehydrate some of the bolotis to have floating in it, rehydrate some chickpeas to blend into it for a bit of extra protein. So you see, with just these, just these few ingredients, there are actually endless possibilities. And I'm thinking I can probably get maybe two soups, which will be four portions each, that's eight meals. I'm not gonna eat eight meals this week, so I can put some in the freezer. I'll have at least three or four different salads. That's all my lunches for the week sorted. Oh, and not forgetting, of course, with the pea pods, don't throw your pea pods away. I'm gonna show you how to make some pea pod soup. Mm -mm 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 -mm. Yeah, I can't wait for that. So actually, <laughs> that's probably three soups. So I'm just gonna bring you guys back up here. The point is, um, in terms of planning, I do plan probably sort of about the beginning of the week or over the weekend or some point just in terms of when can I cook because I don't want to harvest stuff and have it sitting around for four or five days going limp and losing all its nutritional value. I'd rather harvest, get home, have a blitz in the kitchen, make all my food, get it either frozen or refrigerated, whatever it is. And it's a great time of year because you have the most random stuff kind of ripening at the moment you look at it you think how does that go together but guys just jiggle it around play with it try it veg doesn't have to just be a side it can be a main and and try experimenting with just three or four ingredients in either salads or stews or whatever it is because then you'll actually be able to taste each of the individual vegetables and that's a joy. You know, every veg tastes great in its own right. So let's let our veggies sing in our food when we cook them or eat them raw. I'm so excited. I need to start doing some cooking. That tennis has proper distracted me. So for now I'm gonna say cheerio. Happy meal planning, happy harvesting, happy being creative and just inventing stuff and chucking stuff together. If it doesn't work, don't do it again. If it works and you love it, do it again. So I will see you all soon, really soon, I hope. I'm not sure how soon because of what's going on. But I will say in the meantime, cheerio and please take care.